which incidentally, John, is a toss-up this evening. I don't think anybody coming in has a favorite edge here. Central Catholic was beaten in their last ball game by a good Whitehall ball club. They come back from a little uh, disadvantage by not starting Lasicki. As you said, he's starting this evening. Uh, a a toss-up ball game, but very interesting in a matchup department. Creeble for Whitehall, their big center, and of course McCaffrey for Central Catholic. Big matchup inside. The guy that comes out on top, his team's going to win it. I think Bob Schlosser handled his release to the newspaper or his talk with the reporters very well about the outcome of that particular ball game, giving Whitehall a lot of credit, having no excuses for anything that happened. Well, deservedly so, John. You know, Bobby Schlosser's a class act. Uh, his kids play very classy. Uh, they're always gentlemen on the floor. So is Bobby Schlosser. Anytime you talk to him, always a gentleman. He's a class act. And, of course, you know, you, you have to give Whitehall a lot of credit. They come from a little bit of adversity by they have to win two games. They won the one in Whitehall. Um, Whitehall won the one at Rockney Hall. And, then, you, you know, you have to give him a lot of credit for that, uh, especially playing in, in the beginning without Jack Lasicki, who possibly would not have played at all depending on how severe that, that, you know, that ankle sprain was. How do you size up these two teams individually or man for man? Individually and man for man, they're both well coached, number one. Number two, they both play tremendous defense. Number three, they both have an offense that can take the good shot. Whitehall's a little different than Central Catholic. Whitehall shots can come from almost anywhere on a perimeter, all 15-footers. Central Catholic's offense is from, if you watch the game tonight, from the foul line extended on in. But now they have Stalsitz who can fire in the last two ball games. He can hit that shot from the outside. He can keep Whitehall's defense honest and maybe open McCaffrey up. But both, both clubs are well coached. Both are well disciplined. And that's why they're here tonight. I talked to Bobby Schloss a little while ago, and I asked him if the three games this week, this being the third game, with all the pressure, had uh, taken anything out of the kids physically and mentally. After all, Tuesday night he had to go overtime to beat Emmaus. Thursday night, just a, two nights later, he lost the 50-49 to 49 decision, and here he is for the championship tonight. He said, no, mentally and physically, the Vikings are ready. That's right, John. I would say what you remarked about, if it's early in the year, during the league, I can possibly see maybe a letdown. Not during a playoff situation. Kids look forward to a playoff game. Probably when these kids went to bed Thursday night, they were looking forward to this game already. So it's a game that it's for all the marbles. Everybody's going to be ready. Everybody seemed to know that uh, Ed McCaffrey was supposed to be at Stanford uh, for a look-see for a football scholarship. I, it was funny for Ed Beidelman, who's the official scorer for Whitehall, to say, well, I hope if he went that he would be stranded in Chicago in a snowstorm. That's right. He would be st stranded. He could take the Chicago Bears game in. But, no, he's here tonight, and he'll be here in full strength. Okay, we'll have an interesting ball game for you. We had a dandy this afternoon at Stable Arena in which Lehigh defeated Lafayette. We'll have the starting lineups for tonight's ball game in a moment. Goodrich dealer at 1401 Hanover Avenue, Allentown. All right, 3,500 fans here at Buffett's Memorial Gym, and there's the starting lineup for the Zephyr. 13 is Mark Busker, 15 is Jack Lisicki, 25 is Mark Beidelman. Number 45, Jim Downey, and 55 is Dean Grebo. That's the starting five for the Zephyrus and White All High School. And now the Vikings from Allentown Central Catholic. Number 30 is Eric Smith, 6'3 senior. Number 33, Dave Ettinger, a 6'2 junior. 
Number 34 is Dalsitz. Frank, the six foot junior. 44, Keith Bookman, six foot senior. And rounding out the starting five is number 52, Ed McCaffrey, a 6'6 six, six singer. Well, there they are, just out of starting lineups. Whitehall's averaging 47.5, a ball game offensively, defensively, but giving up 39.8. That's why they're here this evening. Central Catholic high-powered offense, 68.4, defensively 48.6. In their last ball game Thursday evening at Rockney Hall, score was 50 to 49. Whitehall held Central Catholic's offense at just 49 points. All right, Super 2 sports team is up the beautiful Stabler Arena this afternoon. Our technical crew, our announcing crew, and there's some of the action as Lehigh defeats at Lafayette in an East Coast con Conference ball game by an 82 to 72 score to up their record to 8 and 4 overall. They are 2 and 0 oh in conference play. You'll be able to watch the videotape replay of that one Sunday night at 8 p.m. right here on a Super 2. Sam Merritt from Found Hill, Herbie Welch from Tamakra, the officials assigned to work tonight's ball game, and we're ready to get underway. Bethlehem's Memorial Gym. Looks like old times here. Capacity crowd on hand. McCaffrey and Kriebel in the center circle. Sam Merritt backs off. And we're ready to go. And the ball game is underway. And it's up to Jack Lissicki takes it out of the air. Sam Merritt almost got lost in the Giants in there with Kriebel and McCaffrey. White all controls. Mark Buskirk. Gets it over the right corner to Downey. Downey, Creeb, a low pivot. Beautiful block by McCaffrey. But Downey gets the ball out of the air. Because up for a shot, not good. Clyde Bideman gets it out to Busker. Well, you can see what this game is going to be like. Right down the wire. Well, like I said, John, both clubs well coached. You see this offense, very patient. They give and go without the ball. They all shoot well. There's Lisicki. Not good. And a rebound by Allen Town Central Catholics. Eric Smith over to Bookman. Bookman quickly up front for the Vikings. Gets it over to Frank Stalsitz. He's the gunner for this ball club. Eric Smith, low post. McCaffrey off the glass. Not good. And a rebound. Follow up Stalsitz. Not good. Rebound McCaffrey. McCaffrey oh. off the glass. He has it. Power move, Eddie McCaffrey. Third effort by the Super Vikings. Boy, that was a great move inside. You just powered the ball up. Great power move. You hear the Viking fans across the way yelling, Eddie, Eddie. This is Mark Busker, guarded by Stalton. Gets it in a downy. Not good. Crebo ties up the ball game at two. Long pass up front. Stalton, and there's a foul. And this one will be on Jim Downey. Well, Vikes beat the Zephyrs up the floor on that one, and Stoltz is going to come away here with two shots on the foul line on a foul by Downey. The Vikes are playing man-to-man. -man. Well, the chips are on the table waiting for someone to scoop them up for the first half East Penn Conference title. Stoltz, it's a junior. Puts the Vikes up 3-2. to two. Stoltz is averaging 10 points a ball game, and... He's the reason why the Vikes are here at that Emmaus game. He really came through in flying colors when they beat the Hornets already Emmaus. He had 14 points in the first meeting between these two ball clubs with six field goals and two out of four from the foul line. In 13 games this year, 141 points for 10.8 average. Here's Busker. Central leads 4-2. to two. Lisicki gets it in a Kriebel. Triple team. He gets it out. This is Busker. Beidelman. You can see how they try to look inside on their offense. They pick and roll along that baseline. They're going to turn this one over, but it's a very effective offense for Whitehall. Six ten and running remaining in the first quarter. We had a great game at Lehigh this afternoon at Staver Center. Watch it. Sunday night. Bookman shot not good. Rebound by Jim Downey of the Zephyrs. Talked to Butch Van Bredekoff, the Lafayette coach, before the ball game, and he sure likes a couple of these kids. He saw the ball game Thursday night over at Rockney Hall. Lisicki. Kriebel. Busker. Central playing that defense pretty nice. They're coming over the top of that uh, baseline screen. That's the proper way to do it. They beat the guy to the cut. This is Downey. Downey had five field goals, two out of two from the foul line for 12 points Thursday night. Jack Lisicki had three field goals. He was not on the foul line. He had six points. He has the ball now. 
in a deep corner. Looking for Kreeble inside. Lost ball. Picked up. There goes Stars. It's for such a nice Catholic. Pass. Good lead pass. That Eric Smith went up too hard on the board with. And his efforts come up with the rebound. Oh, still early in the game. That's his efforts third turnover, but very seldom you see an Eric Smith miss a shot like that on a fast break. Too hard, too fast, Bob. Yeah, too hard, too. Both clubs are running. Both clubs are running. Central, I believe, thinks they can beat Whitehall back defensively. Whitehall's playing at uh, matchup zone defense. Eric Smith. Keith Bookman. Back to Smith. 12 feet out and in. 6-2 to two, Central Catholic. Well, the Vikes get off to a fast start against the Zephyrs on Thursday night. At the end of the first quarter, they led 15-8. Here with 4.25 remaining in the first period, they have a 6-2 to two lead. Lisicki. Beidelman. Downey. You can watch along that baseline under that basket how they pick and roll and come across the lane, especially when the ball's in the corner. They'll roll away and come in strong on the ball side. The Vikes jamming up that center. Lisicki, he's about 18 feet out. Busker. Beidelman from the foul line. Beidelman, a 6'1 junior, had four field goals in a fight's first meeting. There's Stoltzis. Yes! 8-4 Central. Stoltzis has four of the Vikings' eight points. Well, Frank Stoltzis, when he sets and squares off, is not a better shooter in the league. Sometimes he rushes the shot a little bit, and he doesn't square off properly, and the shot's errant. He, he doesn't get the end result, but he's a tremendous shooter. I'm going to have some trivia for you later, Coach. Kriebel okay. goes back door. Nice play. Second field goal for Kriebel. And the Vikes turn it over back court. They lead 8-6, to six, but Whitehall with an opportunity to tie up early here in the ballgame. Has a nice move by Kriebel coming underneath for a reverse layup. Lisicki will work it in. 3.20 remaining in the first quarter. Busker. Ball bat out of bounds by the Vikings, and Whitehall will have it. Good year for Ron Hassler. 10-1 in the league, 11-2 overall. Lisicki picked up defensively by Keith Bookman goes up over Bookman rebound by McCaffrey McCaffrey charged with an offensive foul yeah he came off a little bit too hard you're going to see it right here McCaffrey's going to come off very hard with the ball you can, right there you can see the elbow Boy, he came off hard. That's an NBA rebound right there. That's the way they used to teach you up the suckle hall. <laughs> Lisicki inbounds to Downey. Zephyrs get it. Lisicki once again gets it into Downey. Back to Lisicki. 8-6 to six central leading. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Here's Lisicki. Gets it over to Beidelman. Mark. Almost a steal by Smith. Downey. Not good. Downey follows it up and in. Jim Downey ties up the ball game at eight. Two thirty-five remaining. Stalls it's at an ocean. Got it out to Eric Smith. On the right side to Keith Bookman. Smith. Stalls it. That middle's open for McCaffrey, but he got to get the ball on the cut. Nice play. Nice play inside. Ettinger was fouled. Okay, here's, you're going to see this play. This nice pass in there to Ettinger inside. Squares off. And he's going to be on the line for two shots. Foul by Dean Kriebel, his first. Whitehall second. Dave Ettinger on a foul line for the first time. He had nine points against Whitehall the other night on three field goals and three out of three from the foul line. Dave's averaging seven points a ball game for the Vikes. 
He's a steady ball player. He breaks the tie. Central is up 9-8. to eight. Ten eight Central Catholic. Here's the two two one press. His own press by Central. Secondary defense probably will be in their three two zone. Busker gets it over to Downey. Downey has an alley. Grebel has the goal. Third field goal for Dean Grebel. We're tied again this time at ten. Grebel with another brilliant play inside. I thought that ball would be out. He just starts it. Up. Bingo. Second field goal and six point for Staltitz. That breaks the tie and it's 12 10 Central Catholic. This is Lisicki for the Zephyrs to Downing to Lisicki. Underneath the Krebel double team. Has to get it back out to Buskirk, to Beidelman. Back to Buskirk. Mark checks off. I like the way Krebel handles himself inside. He passes well in traffic. Ben Bernikoff likes him. The big man, he passes very well in traffic. Five-second violation against Bart Feidelman. And Central, with a 12-10 lead, will have an opportunity to pick up a couple more with 1.16 remaining here in the first period. And the Zeps, with four turnovers, do not like them here in the first quarter. Already have turned the ball over four times. Keith Bookman to Stalsitz to Bookman. Edinger in the baseline. No. And a rebound by Downing. Quickly over to Buskirk. Mark. Quickly up over that divisional line. 50 seconds and running. Jack Lisicki. Grebel to Lisicki. 15 feet out. Not good. And a rebound by Edinger of Central. 10 seconds and running. Bookman. There goes Smith in traffic. He lost it out of his hands and out of bounds. And Whitehall will have an opportunity to tie up the ball game before the first quarter ends. Well, they're taking up right where they left off Thursday night, John. Close yep. ball game. Both clubs at the well-played first quarter so far. Downey gets it over to Lisicki. 20 seconds of counting. This is for the first half East Penn Conference Championship. Second half play opens up Wednesday night. Nine seconds. Eight. Lisicki. The Krebel. Back to Lisicki. Makes a good move. They're calling a foul on Eric Smith. His first. Vikings second. Watch how clever Lisicki is with the ball. He actually drew that foul. A little pump fake, head fake, and went underneath. Foul by Smith there who's, who rolled off your picture. Four seconds remaining in the first quarter. Lisicki inbounds at Kriebel. Goes up for the shot. That's not good. McCaffrey rebounds. He just throws it up there. If it goes, it's good. It hit the bank board. That's the end of the first quarter. It is Central Catholic, 12. And Whitehall, 10. We'll be right back. For your new car, you get a whole lot more. We have the area's largest inventory, so you'll save lots more on all Dodges and Datsuns, including the hard-to-get models. We stock more Sentras, Pulsars, Colts, and conversion vans. Come to Rock Rock for your new car. No one can offer you more. back here at the Zaboyo Gym and you know the last time that these two teams met was Thursday night and Whitehall defeated Central Catholic 50 to 49. Well that 49 points was the lowest Viking output of the season and the first time that they were under the 50 mark all year. Their next lowest total was a 53 to 44 victory over Peabird. They have been averaging Central Catholic in the league uh, 65.3 points a ball game and overall 67.7. In league play, Whitehall has been averaging 46.7 and overall 47.5. Well, 
Well, the shooting percentage is in that first quarter, and it's very close. Central leads by two. Central Catholic, four for 10, 40%. Whitehall, five for 12, 42%. Turnovers. Central had three. Whitehall had four. And the second quarter is underway. The Vikes had possession at center court. This is Keith Bookman in to Dave Ettinger. Central leading 12-10. Eric Smith goes in traffic underneath. Ball bat out of bounds by three Trojans. And Central will have it underneath their own basket. Eric Smith inbounds. Gets it into Keith Bookman over to Stalton. Up high. Yes third field goal and the eighth point for Stalton. 14 to 10 Central and the Vikes go into just about a full court press. A little bit of pressure. I don't know why he's pressuring Lasicki there. He could just get a foul on the play and back off and pick up a little bit but I guess the game plan is to keep as much pressure on Lasicki as possible and Bookman is doing that. But you don't want to foul in that situation because it's needless out there. Inbounds to Downing to Buskirk. Buskirk picked up defensively by Stalzitz. He goes by Frank. First the foul against Stalzitz, his first. And it's a third team foul now against the Vikings. Yeah, that shouldn't happen way out there. You're just giving up a team foul, and uh, in the end, it can come back to haunt you with the one-on-one. -on -one. There's a little bit of the play. See how far away he is, but I guess it's the uh, deal is the pressure of the guards. But it's a foolish foul. Lisicki over to Jim Downey. Downey gets it back to Busker to Lisicki. He won't shoot. That's about 18 feet out. He likes to get in around 15. Busker. Both offenses are just about identical here. Crebo got it. That's his fourth field goal. He has eight out of the Zephyr's 12 points. Central leading 14 to 12. McCaffrey from the baseline. No. And a rebound by Jack Lisicki. Lisicki checks off. Central leading in his first half East Bend Conference Championship game. Turnover. Ettinger comes up with it. Gets it up to Stalls. It's too much of a lead. He has to check off. Gets it in Eric Smith. He makes his move. Goes up and he is fouled. Foul by Jack Lasicki. That'll be his first. And Whitehall's third team foul. Here's a play here. Lasicki got him on the wrist. See how high Kreeble was there. Kreeble had actually what amounted to a pretty fair block on the ball. He had part of the ball, but fouled by Jack Lasicki on the play. Smith averaging 13 points a ball game. He only had two field goals last Thursday night. That's the first foul the Vikes have missed tonight. They had four out of four. Well, Smith's been going at a 13-point per game clip, so he's going to have to get around that average tonight if Central's going to win the ball game. Central five out of six on the foul line. Whitehall has yet to go to a charity strike. The Vikes leading by three, 15 to 12. 6-15 remaining in the first half. Lisecki. Jim Downey at an ocean gets it over to Buskirk. Mark Vidalman throws it up. Not good. Rebound by Downey. Turns around, banks it up and in. Jim Downey with a second field goal. And it's 15 to 14 Central. Nice play by Downey. He's a good basketball sure player. Sure is, sure is. All these stalls this looks good. Well, you can see the moment that left his hand. And it was going. That's right, Joe. And he has time, like I mentioned before, and he, and he squares off. It's it's two points. He has ten points already. Bikes have a three-point lead, 17 to 14. There's a foul. Who's this one going to be against? That's going to be on Bookman. I think they're pressuring the guards just a little bit too much when they're out of range. Bookman's first. Here it is. And here's a play. See the foul on Bookman way out in front there. Looks like he had no place to go. What Whitehall's offense is they go to the corner and they try to get the ball inside and a lot of picks and screens rolling coming from the uh, side opposite the ball. That's a 14 foul against Central. Three against Whitehall. Lasicki inbounds. Gets it to Bucks. Buskirk. Jim Downey. 
Mark Grebel makes his move. Not good. Ball bat around. Andy Lasicki in the lineup. Here's McCaffrey. He has it. McCaffrey's second field goal. Well, Lasicki wanted a player control foul. He didn't get it. And uh, McCaffrey went right up and over the top. Five-point lead by Central Catholic. Central runs well. 19 of 14 of Ikes. Here's Jack Lasicki. The problem with this offense, John, a 1-4, is when Lasicki penetrates, there's nobody back. If Central comes off with the ball, Whitehall's very susceptible to the fast break. Now let's see if, if Andy Lasicki plays that pivot. Oh, what a block by McCaffrey. Loose ball picked up by Busker. Great. Gets it out to Jack Lasicki. Now his brother Andy popped in three from the yep. left side, the key the other night. Let's see if he goes there tonight. Well, he's playing low right now on that offense. Turn it over. Foul on Ettinger. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a foul on Ettinger on Lasicki. That'll be the 15th foul. Should be a one-on-one. -on -one. That will be the first All from right. Ettinger. So each one of the starting five for Central Catholic has one personal foul. And now, John, with 427 left, Central has a five-point lead. You see how important those two fouls were deep in the backcourt. Andy Lasicki, Thursday night at three field goals. He had one attempt on the foul line. He missed that, so he had six points. He's a 6'2 junior. He's a 41% foul shooter. McCaffrey rebounds. Oh, wide open. Keith Brookman for the foul line, yes. Brookman's first field goal. Now all five of Central's players have hit the scoring column. 21 to 14, the Vikes' biggest lead. They led 12 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. Four minutes remaining in the first half. Mark Busker over to Andy Lisicki. They're playing a zone right now. Man to man to zone defense. 2 3, Central Catholic. Busker. Jack Lisicki. Mark Busker. Right side to Andy Lisicki. Oh, 18 feet out, and he pops it. Mark Busker, who had one field goal and two out of two from the foul line Thursday night for four points, has two here tonight, the 5'10 junior. 21 to 16 Central. This is Keith Bookman. Hey, Stalsitz, they're giving Stalsitz a lot of room. Good move. Smith, not good. Gets his own rebound, follows it up, and he is fouled. That'll be against Andy Lisicki, his first. And it's a four-team foul. Here's a play. Smith came baseline, goes up for the shot. I think this is the tail end of that offensive rebound he had off his first shot. Got foul on the play. Fourth foul against Whitehall. Team Eric, foul. Eric Smith on the foul line has one out of two tonight. And a field goal. Bikes are now four out of seven, five out of seven from the foul line. Smith missed both of them. And missed that one, and a rebound by Andy Lasecki of Whitehall. Jack Lasecki. Three minutes remaining and running here in the first half. Busker. Guarded by Stalsitz. Don't forget Sunday night at 8 o'clock on a Super 2, Lehigh Lafayette. From beautiful Stabler Arena. Oh, it's great to see this crowd here tonight. Downey with the ball, gets it over to Buskirk. Seating here is about 3,500. Jim Downey with the ball, gets it out to Jack Lisicki. Lob in Andy Lisicki, not good. He was fouled. This against Ettinger, his second. Here it is. Andy Lasicki does a nice job of pinning the defensive man. He gets the ball. You see McCaffrey coming over to help out. Blocks the ball, but the foul was committed before that. Lasicki did a nice job of pinning underneath low post. This is Andy Lasicki. His brother, Jack, wears number 15. Andy, 6'2", junior. 21-17, Central. Lisicki backs off, says he's ready. Yeah. 
Got a pair. 21-18 of Ikes by three. 220 and running remaining here in the first half of the ball game. Ettinger, Keith Bookman. Bookman likes to get in about a step closer than where he's at. Well, I'll tell you, Stalsitz is wide open over here. They come to him. He, you know, he's set. He hasn't touched the ball. Now he has it. First and time. He, oh, he, had a he was ready to go. He's yeah. trying to pull the trigger on that one. <laughs> he's out of range out there, I think. Eric Smith. Ball was kicked by the Zephyrs. Smith threw in traffic that time. There's three right hall players there trying to get it to McCaffrey. Well, he tried to force it in. That's true, John. Uh, they're going to pack back on McCaffrey. Bookman, 20 feet out. No good. Rebound by Jack Lissicky Whitehall. Lissicky got it by Keith Bookman. Gets it to Crebo. Busker with the baseliner. Mark Busker. Good baseliner to make it 21-20. That was Mark's second field goal in the ball game. Whitehall hasn't taken a bad shot. Every time they shoot, they have somebody have good four balance underneath. That's always been our trademark. Stalsitz. That's the guy, John. They got to go to to, to uh, help out with McCaffrey inside. He can hit. 23-20 Central. I start saying patience has always been a Whitehall trademark. That's right. You're right. Jack Lisicki. No good. He pulled the strip. That went in. It went in. Hit the front and the spin on the ball. Looked, kicked like, it in. looked like he pulled a string on a thing and hit, bounced out, and then took the reverse spin and went back in. That was his first field goal. That cuts the Viking lead to one, 23 22. We're in a countdown, 45 seconds of running. Looks like the Vikes are going to go for one here. Thursday night, Central Catholic led at the halftime break, 28 24. They lead now by just one. But they'll have an opportunity to get the last shot off. Eric Smith. McCaffrey to Bookman. I think when you got a guy like Stahls that's in the lineup, you got to go to him, John, until he misses. He's been hitting all. He's been hitting all game, and that'll open things up inside for McCaffrey. 15 seconds and ticking. McCaffrey Stahls to Bookman. Eric Smith makes his move, gets his own rebound, follows it up and in. And that's the end of the first half. Allentown Central Catholic 25, Whitehall 22. We'll be right back. Serving the greater Lehigh Valley from Allentown, this is Service Electric Cable TV, Super 2. Got killed the first time. <laughs> We're ready. Well, hi there once again, everybody. All right, let's go. Well, hi there once again, everybody. I'm Johnny Dady, along with Bob Nemeth, all set to bring you the second half of this first half championship basketball game from Best Memorial Gym to determine the Spen Conference first half champion. At the end of the first half, 
It's Central Catholic 25 to 22 over Whitehall. The Vikes led 12 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. High score for Central Catholic in the first half. Frank Stalzis with 12 points and five field goals, two out of two fouls. And the second half is underway. Eric Smith at five points. Dave Edinger, two points. Keith Bookman, two. And Ed McCaffrey, four. The line for Allentown Central Catholic, 10 field goals, five out of eight from the foul line. For their total of 25, they had six personal fouls called against them. Mark Buskirk with the ball for the Zephyrs. High score for Whitehall, Dean Kreeble with eight points on four field goals. This is Jack Lasicki. He had one field goal for two points in the first half. There's the ball batted down by Edinger and almost saved. But he stepped on the baseline, and Whitehall will have it. Mark Beidelman had a field goal for two. Andy Lasicki, two out of three fouls for two. Jim Downey had two field goals for four. So the line for Whitehall, 20 field goals, 10, or rather 10 field goals, two out of three from the foul line. So their total of 22, they had four personal fouls called against them. And here is a personal foul, and it will be against Eric Smith of Central. That will be his second personal foul in the ball game. Here, here comes a foul right here. You see Lasicki getting the ball. Smith right there committed the personal foul. It's important right now for any team to get that first field goal to get on the board early. Now, if you like to keep stats and compare ball games, in Thursday night's ball game in the first half, Central had 12 field goals and four out of four from the foul line for 28 points. Tonight they had 10 field goals and five out of eight. Whitehall had 10 field goals, four out of four from the foul line for their 24. Almost a steal by Keith Bookman. Today they are equal from the field with 10 field goals, but two out of three from the foul line for their 22. Now, if that isn't confusing, I have trivia for you, Bob Nemeth. What is a Zephyr? What is this? It's a mild breeze. Well, according to Webster... It's a mild breeze, it's, Webster. Right? It's, it's a west wind. A, a, it's, a, it's a west wind. A west wind or any soft, gentle breeze. Also, it's a soft yarn. Yeah. Well, see, I was right on that. Here's a foul by McCaffrey inside low post. That's his second personal foul. It's interesting how these schools come up with these names, and you wonder what a Zephyr is, and now you know. It's a fine, soft yarn or worsted. Used for knitting and embroidery. Now, think about what a Viking is. Mark Buskirk with the ball. Gets it over to Jim Downey. Downey over Downey with a baseliner. Hits it. Yeah, he can hit that baseline shot. Downey on a pass to Mark Beidelman. And it's 25-24. Central by one. Eric Smith. Stoltz has had an ocean. There's Eric Smith in the alley. Throws it up and in. Eric Smith's third field goal of the night. Central has a three-point advantage, 27-24. A nice drive by Smith. Incidentally, Central Catholic's 10 field goals came on 20 shots for 50%. Whitehall, 10 for 21, 48%. No, both, you can't get any closer than that. No, both clubs shooting very well. All right, Lisicki with the ball. Goes up a 15-footer. It's not good. McCaffrey position, positions himself and gets the rebound. Boy, Stalsitz was wide open in the corner. There's Stalsitz. Bingo! Sixth field goal for Stalzitz. He had six the other night. He had five in the first half and one in the second half. Tonight he had five in the first half and picked up one here in the second half. John Central has a pure shooter in Frank Stalzitz. No, there's no doubt about that. There's almost a turnover. Mark Busker comes up with the loose ball. 29-24 Central. Stalzitz so far has only missed one shot. Busker. Boy. <laughs> He, he just threw that one up there yeah. with the left hand yet. And that's Mark's third field goal of the night. 5'10", junior, good all-around athlete. 29-26. There's McCaffrey off the glass high. Not good. And a rebound picked off by the Zephyrs. And here's Jack Lisicki. He's in a seam but has to check out of it. Just about the perimeter area. Well, they're still running the same offense. 1-4. Osicki's the quarterback of their offense. They like that inside pick-and-roll stuff that they do. Kreeble on a baseline. Gets it back down. Beidelman throws it up. It's not good. Kreeble with the rebound. He lost it, but it was picked up by Beidelman. And Beidelman goes and checks off in the corner. To Lisicki. 4.43 remaining in the third period. You can see how patient Whitehall is. They go for the good shot. What is a Viking? Well, Vikings and Northmen. They used to command those ships, John. <laughs> We're in Scandinavia somewhere. Kribo, yes. 
fifth field goal for Dean Crebo. And his efforts pulled to within one. They trail 29-28. The Viking is one of the pirate Northmen who plundered the coast of Europe from the 8th century to the 10th century. Ettinger off the glass and in. They, First field goal for Ettinger. They plundered, huh? Yep. That was right on both those guys. Oh, yeah. Well, so was Webster. Yep. 31-28. Central Catholic. Lisicki, hold it. That was a wrestle and a foul before the shot. That, that foul will be on Bookman again. Lisicki can't do any damage way out there. Keith Bookman charged with a second personal foul. There's the foul. Foul number 44. When it gets down to the wire, these fouls are going to be very important because it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Third team foul already for Central Catholic very early here in the third quarter. And Whitehall does not have any. Here's Jack Lisicki right in front of you. Sam Merritt from Fountain Hill, the official. Sam, one of the top officials in the area and out of the area. He's a good one. Has a lot of college ball games. Herbie Wells, the pride and joy from Tamaqua. Grebo. Deflected, knocked out of bounds by Central Catholic, and Whitehall will have it. Bookman played that one perfectly. The Central likes that play. Deep on the baseline and flip it back on the high post area for that uncontested layup. Grebo. Oh, has a knock right out of his hands. And out of bounds again. So the Zephyrs will have it. Whitehall likes that play there. Grebo. Pilisecki. He makes his move. Throws it up. Not good. McCarthy with the rebound. Pass up front is two on two. Pass to Ettinger. Ettinger has to get it back out. Bookman makes a good move inside the foul line and has it. Keith Bookman with a second field goal. 33 28 Central. Central five out of six here in the third quarter off the floor. Lasicki with the ball for the Zephyrs. Second half he's been conference play opens up on Wednesday. Downey. That's good, and there's a foul underneath. Downey with a short field goal, but the foul will be against Whitehall. One of the players caught pushing off. I believe it was Creeble right here. He's right in the center of your picture. He's going to come in. 55 right there. That'll be his second personal foul. And here's Bookman for the Vikes. 33 to 30, Central. McCaffrey goes up over Crebo. Not good. Rebound picked up by Downey. Saw a couple of my old buddies here. Attorney Jim Heidecker. Along with Freddie Charles. Good move by Lasicki. He That good. Batted around in the air. And the Vikings, Eric Smith comes down with it. Boy, Stahl sits wide open in the corner momentarily. Central wants a timeout. Okay, 2.23 remaining in the third quarter. Central East 33-30. We'll be right back. ABE Car Care Centers introduced the no compromise repair philosophy. Car Care Plus. Car Care Plus is quality evident in everything we do. Car Care Plus is reliability. Our no nonsense guarantees cover all our work and you. Car Care Plus is affordability, unmatched value for dependable service. Car Care Plus is the ultimate guarantee. Quality, reliability, and affordability for your muffler brakes and shocks. Available only at ABE Car Care Centers. Memorial Gym, capacity crowd on hand to take in this playoff game for the first half East Penn Conference title. Allentown Central Catholic leading 33 to 30, and this has just been a super week for sports on the Super 2. Tuesday night, we had Central's 53 to 51 overtime win over Mayas. Thursday night, we had Whitehall's 50 to 49 win over the Vikes. This afternoon, up at Staver Arena, we had Lehigh's 82 to 72 victory over Lafayette, and of course, this championship game tonight. Well, 2:23 left in the third quarter. Central Catholic off to a good start. Uh, 
percentage-wise, the field goal department, five out of seven. Whitehall, three for nine. Nobody turned the ball over in that in the third quarter so far. I think if, St if Central wants to get a little bit of a lead here, they got to go to Stalsitz a little more. He, had, he handled the ball one time so far in the third quarter, and they came out of it with a field goal. A lot of time he's loose down in that corner, and that's where a lot of his shots come from. Well, he's equally scoring output from Thursday night. There's still plenty of time in this one. But as you say, he's got to shoot. McCaffrey, not good. And a rebound by Beidelman. Over to Lisicki. So the Zephyr's now controlling those boards. Mark Busker, not good. Grab the rim, goaltending. So give the field goal to Busker, his fourth. Now wait. It's only goaltending, John, if the ball... Let's see what this interpretation is here. Let's watch this. This trailing official will make this call here. Watch 52. Center your picture. Where is he? Watch his hand. He is on the rim, but the ball did not have a chance of going in, so it's going to be a technical, and they're not going to give him the field goal. Okay. There's Joe Deutsch and JV coach Ronnie Hassler in the center. Carl Case. Lisicki. And his efforts have possession at center court. Had that shot had a chance of going in, they would have had that field goal. They would have gave Whitehall a field goal in that situation. Lisicki for the Zephyrs, picked up defensively by Keith Bookman. Andy Lisicki in the lineup, replacing Bideman. Jack Lisicki, no oh, good, way off target. Rebound by McCaffrey, and here comes Keith Bookman. Central leading 33 30, 140 remaining and running here in the third period. Underneath, double fake pump by McCaffrey, but there was a whistle before the play. And this will be the first, second personal foul against Whitehall here in the second half. And it'll be against Jim Downey and his second person in the ball game. Central with three personal fouls. Whitehall now with two. Bookman. Now stalls it. Eric Smith. Bookman. Stalls is out too far. Eric Smith in the alley. Throws it up. Not good. And a rebound picked off by Jim Downey of the Zephyr. Lisicki up front for Whitehall. They trail 33 30. 105 are running remaining in the third period. The winner of this one will be the first half champion of East Penn League. And of course, there's an oh. there's McCaffrey with a steal. Let's see if he goes for the dunk. Yes! Yeah. Got it! There was no doubt in anybody's mind, and there's nothing that can pick a team up more than that play by Eddie McCaffrey dunk shot. Let's see what happens with Central Catholic. 35-30. Listen to the Vikings fans. They were yelling, Eddie, Eddie. What? And he got the slam dunk for him. And that's just liable to pick Central Catholic up. What Whitehall has to do right now, John, is come right back with a field goal. If they don't and Central gets it, it could put Central up seven. What Whitehall needs right now to quiet down the crowd and everybody else is a field goal right now. 20 seconds, 15 seconds, and running. 35-30, Central 10 seconds. There's Jack Lisicki, can't get the shot off. Buskirk goes it up, not good. Rebound by Central Catholic. That is the end of the third quarter. The Vikings lead it 35 to 30. We'll be right back. spend days looking and not find as large a selection as we have every day at Rothrock's Used Car and Truck Expo. And our volume means you save money. 
save on all makes, including Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Dobson, and Toyota, Honda, Buick, trucks, vans, and four-wheelers, with many prices under $2,000. You'll enjoy one-stop shopping at the place to save money, Rothrock's Used Car and Truck Expo. to bring you the fourth quarter of this ball game, 35-30. Alton Center got the leading at this point. This is for the first half he's been conference championship. The only other teams unbeaten in league play this year, Banger in the Colonial League, Lehigh in the Centennial League. Banger's unbeaten 10 in 10 games overall. Lehigh is 10-1 on the season. Their only loss to Central Catholic. Eric Smith with the ball for the vice. Gets it out to Stalsett. Ettinger back out to Bookman. Well, the five-point lead. Central can afford to take their time and go for the good shot. Eric Smith has a nose, and he pops it. No good. McCaffrey rebounds. Jump ball. I tell you, action's hot and heavy out there. Whitehall will have possession on the alternating. Well, McCaffrey forced to jump ball. Here it is. Okay, here it is. Let's... McCaffrey forces this, he ties him up, and he falls down over Andy Lasicki. And in trying to retain balance, a little fracas broke out, but it's under control. Okay. The right hall has possession backcourt. There's a shot of some of the fans there. That's the right hall oh, fans you're looking at. And it's jammed here. They are on our side of the court. Mark Buskirk with the ball for the Zephyrs. 35-30, central leading. Plenty of time remaining in this ballgame. Downey double fake pump. Almost a steal, almost a turnover, but Buskirk saves it for Whitehall. In Lissicky flip-flop. Now, one thing about Whitehall, as you can see on the screen, they take their time, they have good composure. Andy Lissicky. Now, he hit three of those on Thursday night from the exact same spot. He picks up his first tonight. That's right. And now it's only 35-32. There's Stoltzis. Yes! Seventh field goal for Stoltzis. He had the ball twice, John, this half, two times for field goals. They got to go to that guy. If he gets his feet set, it's two points. He's just a pure shooter. 37-32, the Vikes. 6-30 remaining in a ball game in regulation. Mark Buskirk. Oh, do we have a turnover? Downey. They're calling a foul against Stalton. Well, that's the fourth team foul. Still not a one-on-one, -on -one, but that's going to play an important part in this ball game. Central Catholic has four team fouls. Whitehall only has two. Here's the play right here. I, I thought it was a jump ball. I thought Stoltz had the ball first. The foul occurred as they were ripping the ball apart. Buster, Lisicki on the right side. Yes, Jack Lisicki, second field goal. 37-34, Central, 6-10 remaining and running. Keith Bookman gets it over to Eric Smith. Stoltz sits. Takes play on the right side. Now comes back left. There goes McCaffrey in the scene. And there was a foul before the shot. It's a tough game to call, John. It's on Trebel, his third. You got officials doing a good job of calling this ball game. Okay, here it is. McCaffrey goes in very tight. You see Trebel coming across. And the foul was committed right there. He made a nice play just to disallow that field goal on McCaffrey. Eric Smith into McCaffrey off the glass. Not good. McCaffrey taps not good. Eric Smith lost it. Lissicki comes up with it for the Zephyrs. Listen to the crowd here. Treble on the baseline. Has the ball knocked out of his hand by Brooklyn. And a foul and by Treble. No, wait a minute. Nope. No okay. foul. Boy, Treble got away with one there. That's a good call. I'd rather see him stay in the ball game and call that fourth personal foul. It was a loose ball. But boy, very, they could have called one on Creeble right there. 
And Whitehall gets possession. Lisicki inbounds to Busker. Picked up defensively by Stalsitz. Over there is a steal by Bookman. Bookman over to Stalsitz. Stalsitz is fouled. Uh, that's a good foul. Good foul in there after the turnover by Busker. Make him get it on the foul line. A foul against Busker. That's only his first of the night. That was a heady play by Busker. And Stalsitz goes to the foul line. The six foot junior has seven field goals and two out of two from the foul line tonight. His team is up 37 34. 38 34. There's Sam Merritt. There's Frank Stalsitz. Boy, what a familiar name that is in sports in Allentown. He picks up a pair. I'll tell you, this kid's only a junior. He's going to be around for a long time. Well, he can fire. Vikes have a five-point lead, 39-34, but still more than five minutes remaining in the ball game. 5.15 to be exact and counting. Downing. Andy Lisicki. Offensive foul against Andy Lisicki. That will be his second. And that'll be the fourth. This is yep. one, two, three. Now that's the 15 that's, foul. That's a 15 foul, but a player control foul. There are no shots. That's why Central's not shooting. All right, Central with possession. Well, if Central scores here. They they can widen the gap a little bit. They better get it up front. Stalls it's now gets up over that divisional line. He's double teamed, and he loses the ball. And here comes Lisicki. No tap up by Downey. Beautiful tap-in shot by Jim Downey to make it 39-36. Whittle did a nice job on the pressure, and Stalsitz invited himself into the trap error. He dribbled right into there got, and got caught up in a double team and lost the ball. But Downey came through with a, a, a big offensive rebound for Whitehall. Downey, the 6'2 senior, is a good basketball player. Oh, crucial field goal right there. There's another turnover. There's a foul against McCaffrey. That'll be his third. That's a fifth foul against Central Catholic. Well, it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Lasicki's going on for a one-on-one. -on -one. one thing about Whitehall, I mentioned before, John, down through the years, composure keeps them in the ball games. They don't lose their cool. They come up and just keep playing. And that's been a trademark for Whitehall. I think Central Catholic wants a timeout right now. Yes, they do. All right, the second timeout for the Vikings. They led 35 to 30 at the end of three quarters. And with 4.29 remaining in regulation, they lead 39 to 36. And what I meant when I meant composure, I don't mean composure as far as attitude. Composure as far as their, as their offense and the way they play the game out there. They take their time, no matter how far behind, they just peck away. It's been an uphill battle for them all night, but they're, but they're within striking distance all night, John. It's only a three-point game right now. All right, Bob Schlosser, his fifth-year head coach of Central Catholic, Denny Ramella, his assistant. Charlie Post, the JV coach. The principal is Jim Hodrick and George Kinnick, the athletic director. Over in Whitehall, Ronnie Hassler and his third year's head coach. Carl Case, his assistant. Joe Deutsch, the JV coach. Dale Baker, the principal. Dick Tracy, the athletic director. Well, both clubs, no, there's no doubt about it, John. They're both class acts out there. Both have a lot of talent. Both are well coached. They both come from fine schools. It's, it's a, I think it's a tribute to the schools the way these kids play the game. All right, Dickie Schmidt, who is the athletic director at Duroff High School, is the game manager for tonight's contest. And we want to thank Dick for the courtesies extended to us and making this telecast possible. That's right. We'll be over at Duroff. Second half play. Well, Jack Lasicki's going to be on for two. He can pull a Zeph to within two points. He's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. And right now, these fouls are so important. Lasicki tonight has two field goals. He had one in the first half and one in the second half. He had one attempt in the foul line here in the second half of this ball game, and he missed it. But he has that one. 39-37. He's a good foul shooter. He's up around 84%. So awfully good foul shooter. 39-38. The Vikes led by five. Now they lead by one. Oh. And it's two on one. There goes McCaffrey. He missed it. Well, McCaffrey took a bad shot. That's, that's the type of shot you want against pressure. They had a two-on-one situation. 
The thing to do there was to pass off, I think, that I had a field goal. And now Whitehall could take the lead in his ball game. Hey, Jim Downey yeah. gets it over to Andy Lisicki. Back to Downey. Downey can shoot from there. Yep. Hey, a lot of people think on a press you have to steal the ball. Not so. Bad shot. Buskirk follows it up. Not good. Trebo. Yes. Sixth field goal for Trebo. And Whitehall goes ahead 40 to 39. It was the first time since the game was tied at 10 that Whitehall went ahead. Central appears lackadaisical of bringing that ball up front court. There goes Stoltzitz. No good. Rebound by the Zephyrs. There's Lisicki. He checks off. Well, they got a one-point lead. Central Catholic is man-to-man. -man. And here's there on your screen a one-for offense. And Lisicki's on the baseline right now. It's Buskirk out front. Downey with the ball. Makes his move. Yes. Sixth field goal for Downey. And Whitehall leads by three. And there's a foul against Jack Lisicki. His second. Boy, if you're if you're Ronnie Hassler, you do not want that foul in this situation. You're up by three. And you can let Central back in a ball game, but more importantly, the clock is stopped. 3.05 remaining. Whitehall leading 42 to 39. You have to remember they are the defending. District 11 champions. That's right. Both clubs know how to win out there. Pete Bookman on a foul line for the first time tonight. That's his fifth point. 42 to 40. Boy, what a ball game. Six foot senior, averaging 9.1 points a ball game. That's a good shot at Pete. Played a fine four game today. He's a good athlete. Yeah, he is. Picks up a pair. Yep, one point ball game, 305 on the clock. 42 to 41. Buskirk. Blocking foul against Edinger, and that's his third. That was a good call. Here it is right here. The pass gonna come right in your living room. Edinger 33 is gonna move over in the side on Buskirk. Right there's a the blocking foul, no doubt about it. Busker, three field goals tonight. First trip to the foul line. Let's see, Busker shoots at 52% off the foul line. He's a good, good clutch player, though, this kid. 43-41 wide on. Here's the important one. This one will push it up to the second possession. If he misses, Vikes only need one. If he makes it, Vikes need the ball two times. Got it. 44-41. Smith up front with the ball. Gets it over to Stalsitz. Oh, Stalsitz only two field goals in the second half. Well, well, last ball game he only had one. Well, John, you know, the, the two times he got the ball, he had the shot. They don't really go to him. Smith. Rebound, Smith. Two twenty-five and running. There he There's is. There's it. No. And a rebound by Dowdy. Well, if Whitehall looked up, Andy Lasicki was wide open on the other end. Two fifteen. Whitehall's up three. They're going to hang on here a little bit. Downey with the ball, and they do this well. Make no mistake about that. Whitehall can hold the ball. Forty-four, forty-one. And Zephyrs by three. Knocked out of bounds by Bookman. Well, Whitehall has everything in their favor. Timeout. They 201 on the clock. They're up by three. They have the ball, and they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. McCaffrey only three field goals tonight. Two in the first half, one here in the second half. And that's the difference for the Vikes. Well, that's the difference. That's right. Uh, Whitehall, I'll say it again, and it's down through the years, along with their composure, as the Vikes are on your screen, what they do, they look at the other team's stats, and they take the big score, and they try to shut them down. And uh, again, they're doing that tonight. McCaffrey not up to his average. 
Don't forget Sunday night at 8 p.m. on a Super 2, you'll be able to watch the replay of the Lehigh and Lafayette ball game from Stable Arena. Sunday night at 8 on a Super 2. There are some of the Whitehall fans here at Bethune's Memorial Gym. Well, they're breathing a little easy right now. They have a three-point lead. As I said, they have the basketball. Two oh one remaining in a ball game. Boy, Whitehall fought back, John, from a seven point deficit here in a quarter. There's a steal. Oh. There goes Bookman. He has it. Boy, 44 43. I'll tell you, what a ball game. This game has had everything. Mike's play good defense also. Not only Whitehall. Brock is running, 140 remaining. There's Busker. Oh. Andy Lisicki. Almost had a double team on Busker out front. Downey. They're going to hold. Look to me like they're going to hold John and with a one-point lead, and they're hoping for a foul, which they can kick the game up to three if they hit it because they're not even looking for the shot here. They, this is their spread offense. They are not looking for the shot, but this is a long time to hold the ball. 115. Lisicki with it. Gets it over to Busker. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Almost. Oh, Kreeble's wide open underneath. Oh! He should have taken the shot. Kreeble had the shot. And the Vikes went out of nerve and they could have had that ball. Kreeble, if Kreeble takes that shot, the game's over. He was wide open. He elected to pass off. 45 seconds. Too high. Forty-four seconds. What a ball game this is. As you would say, John, the fours are wild. Timeout, Whitehall. Man, when Ronnie Hassler sees this replay and he sees that shot that Preble gave up, he's going to sit back in his chair and take a long side. Vikes not anticipating the pass, so they could have had the loose ball. Yeah, that's right. Here comes a jam from McCaffrey off his steal. 52 in your pictures, McCaffrey. 55's Preble. Ball's knocked loose inside in a jam up. Be a nice pass to McCaffrey. And here it comes, a two-hand stuff. Bang. White on leading 44-43, 44 seconds remaining. When time is in, the Zephyrs will have possession. Well, it's not going to be an overtime game as long as we're on the odd numbers here. One club's going to get away with a win and a well-deserved victory because both clubs have played well the entire ball game. But boy, it was a long time. Uh, 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 Whitehall started to handle the ball with about 125 on the clock. It's a long time to hold the ball in any ball game. Well, it's a championship basketball, and I guess that's the kind of game it's supposed to be. That's right. Two great ball clubs out here. And they're, 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 like I said before, credit to their schools and also to the East Penn League. Lisicki, the Busker, and the clock is running. Downing. 30 there seconds. There's, there's Brookman. Foul and he was fouled. Foul before the shot. I can't believe, and Ronnie Hassler will not believe this either, that the offense, both offensive guys are crossing and are too close together. That's why the steals happened the last two times. And couple steals tonight by right. Bookman. Here's the play. Bookman playing a fine four game. I said that when he was on the line before. He was fouled by Jack Lisecki. When you're holding the ball, you have to keep spread out. I know Ronnie Hassler didn't want that type of action while they were holding the ball. We're tied at 44. <laughs> 27 seconds remaining. Boy, I'll tell you. Bookman, quiet, steady, stole the ball countless times tonight, and he made probably the, the most important steal of the ball game. 
Vikes lead 45-44. Well, is Zeph's going to have one chance right here because I'm sure the Vikes aren't going to foul. They're going to get one chance at the shot. If the Vikes get it, ball game's over. Lisicki, Jack. Buster. Cross key to Downing. Downing had a notion. He throws it up. He has oh, it. Oh, boy. What a shot by Downing. Time out, Vikings. That's what Downing did yep. in the last ball game. Same. That came That's with right. 14 right. seconds, and tonight it comes with seven seconds. That's right. What a clutch shot. I said they're going to have one. They're going to have one try at it, one shot, and Downey did it again. Wow, what a clutch player. Downey averaging eight points a ball game, a 6'2 senior, number 45. Here's the shot right here. Cool. Under pressure. He had hands in his face. Off the board. Textbook right in. 45 to 46-45, Zephyr's lead. That was Downey's seventh field goal of the night. He's steady. Just seven seconds. Central has to get that ball up court. That's a lot of time to get the ball up. They're only going to get one shot. Again, that's what this game of basketball is all about, John. A is lot it, of thrills. Is, is it an ironic, though, that Downey pumped yeah. up the last deuce to winner? They gave Clyde Hall the victory and sent it into this playoff That's game. Right. And he did it tonight with seven seconds. And the Vikings did get that last shot at Rockney Hall. That's In fact, right. they had three. The ball just rolled off and out. So they'll be setting something up. They got to throw the ball in pretty long. But they got to get it up quick, and they can't do it with the dribble. They get it with the pass, get the shot off. Boy, it all comes down to one shot. You play an entire first half. Both clubs are 10 and 1, 11 ball game. The entire works comes down to one shot, seven seconds left. Inbound to McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Throw it away. Over. Ball game's over. Whitehall's going to win it. They try to get it to Stalsitz. You gotta pass the ball, but you can't pass the ball in a situation where you gotta throw the ball the at least half the court. Yeah, they gotta was, be short and snappy. There was plenty of time to work it up. There was a lot of time to work it up. There's only actually they got the ball up and, and when it went out of bounds right here, only three seconds came off the clock. They had time. They were way over stalls its head. Well, what can happen in this situation? You have to try to get, right now, if you're Central Catholic, you have to try to get a player control foul, stop the clock, and that still don't send you to the foul line. It's going to be awfully difficult for Central Catholic to win this ball game. They need a quick steal in this situation. Remember, the ball's going to be put out of bounds, central side of the floor, at the sideline marker, about 10 feet away from the baseline. Their only chance right now is a steal. What a ball game. Great ball game. Zephyrs were down seven, kept their composure, came back. Four seconds remaining. Mark Buskirk will work it in for the Zephyrs. Buskirk is fouled by McCaffrey with three seconds. And Kreeble goes to the foul line for the first time tonight. Kreeble with six field goals. Three seconds. This kid right here played a tremendous ball game. Downey, seven field goals tonight. Two of the seven in the first half. Five big ones in the second half. Well, Whitehall, John, you got to give them a lot of credit. They had a win, too. They did that. It's a mark of a good ball club. Yes, it is. Forty-five, two seconds. That's the basketball game. Whitehall wins at 48 to 45. And with the victory goes the first half East Penn title. Well, 
This ball game started off nip and tuck all the way in that first half. The shooting was almost identical. Central Catholic 50%, Whitehall 48%. In that third quarter, it was all Central Catholic. They tore out to a seven-point lead, and it looked almost unsurmountable the way the game was going. But as, as I said before, I mentioned the word composure with Whitehall. They just kept pecking away, pecking away. They kept their composure. They did throw the ball away two times, trying to hold the ball. Too long to hold the ball, I think, but they came out of it with a well-deserved victory, 48-45. They beat a fine Central Catholic ball club in doing it. At the end of the first quarter, Central Catholic led 12-10. They outscored Whitehall 13-12 in the second period to increase their lead to 25-22 to at the halftime break. They again outscored Whitehall this time in the third period, 10-8 to increase the lead to 35 to 30 after three quarters. But the Zephyrs came storming back in the fourth period. They outscored Central 18 to 10 to win a ball game 48 to 45. High score for Whitehall was Dean Creeble with 14 points and six field goals and 202 fouls. Jim Downey also at 14 with seven field goals. Andy Lasicki a field goal, 203 fouls for four. Mark Bidelman a field goal for two. Jack Lasicki, two field goals, 203 fouls for six. Mark Buskirk, three field goals, 202 fouls for eight. The line for Whitehall, 20 field goals, eight out of 10 from the foul line for their total of 48. They had 11 personal fouls called against them. For Allentown Central Catholic, the high score was Frank Stalsitz with 18. He had seven field goals and four out of four from the foul line. Eric Smith, three field goals, one out of four fouls for seven. Dave Ettinger, a field goal, two out of two fouls for four. Keith Bookman, two field goals, four out of four fouls for eight. Ed McCaffrey, four field goals for eight. The line for Central Catholic, 17 field goals, 11 out of 14 from the foul line for their total of 45. They had two, four, seven, 13 personal fouls called against them. So with the victory, Whitehall ups its league record to 11 and one, 12 and two overall. And with the victory goes the first half East Penn Conference title. Central Catholic is 10 and 2. They are 12 and 2 overall. The final score again 48-45. Stick around because Bob Nemeth hopefully will be able to chat with Ronnie Hassler in just a moment. The Whitehall wins the first half East Penn Conference title with a 48-45 victory over Alton Central Catholic. And now let's go courtside. Bob Nemeth and Coach Ron Hassler. Okay, I'm here with Coach Ron Hassler. Whitehall Zephyrs this evening defeat a fine Central Club 48-45. And Ron, you got to be happy with this one. Oh, very happy and very proud. I, I said to our coaches it was like a play script written for two nights and we did it the backup performance tonight. It was almost the exact same situation, fighting back the whole game, finally struggling back and, and then holding on. Well, actually, your backs were against the wall. You had to beat Central Catholic two times. You did that. And like you said, the script, Jim Downey, both ball games kicked in the final clutch goal. Uh, no, not, that wasn't by script. <laughs> At that time, you're just praying. And I, well, we must have prayed pretty well because it dropped. But still, he did the same thing at Rockney Hall, and he did up here. When a game comes down like that to one shot, what do you feel like when you're sitting on a bench? Uh, a lot calmer than most people think. I, I think you just sort of you sit there and you have the confidence. Uh, a couple years ago I didn't. I was a nervous wreck. But I, I think you got to sit there. If you believe in your team, you, you got to believe they're going to get something good. No, your ball club this year, and I said it numerous times, they're well coached. They, they were down seven. 
They kept their composure, especially offensively. They don't lose their cool at all. They come up, they take the good shot, they hit the boards, and they do exactly what, what's expected of them. You practice that a lot. Uh, we practice poise a lot. We, we want them to carry on on the court and off the court with it. I think it was very easy to lose it when McCaffrey had his slam. Yeah, and uh, right. instead, I think the momentum switched around somehow. You know, it, it, somehow it just switched and sort of rolled back our way, and, and we kept our poise. And, and I think they uh, they seemed to tighten up a little, I think, in the last last two minutes. At least their perimeter shooting. Right. You know, and, and that, that helped us quite a bit, too. It's hard to do that for a whole game. Well, defensively, you're the only club that kept Whitehall under 50 both times both times they lost that's a credit to your defense i think you have to uh, against their team they, they like to run so much and they have such talent i think in order to even have a chance you got to keep them under and i think once you start keeping them down there it becomes a psychological thing you know they're they're used to scoring more points and i think the fourth quarter you get a little itchy if you're not if, if the game isn't going the way you're used to games going well no doubt about it you did a fine job coaching ron your club Look fantastic. They had to win two games. They did that. You're the first half champion. Congratulations from Service Electric TV. Right, John, you back to you. Thank, thank you very much, Bob, and congratulations, Coach Ronnie Hassler. So that's it from Belton's Memorial Gym, where jam packed capacity crowd of 3,500 plus took in a ball game and watched Whitehall score a 48 to 45 come from behind victory over the Vikings from Allentown Central Catholic. East Penn Conference, second half play starts on Wednesday. We certainly hope that you get out and see your favorite team in action. Don't forget, Sunday night at 9 p.m., you'll be able to watch the videotape replay of the Lehigh Lafayette ball game from the beautiful Stable Arena. So on behalf of our entire technical crew, my sidekick, Bob Nemeth, I'm Johnny Dady saying good night from Bethune's Memorial Gym, where Whitehall defeated Central Catholic 48-45. to This has been a Super 2 Sports presentation.